Hello everyone, my name is Heather Moorfield Lang and I'm an assistant professor with the School of Library and Information Science here at the University of South Carolina and today I'm going to be presenting great presentation tools for librarians. Now these are great presentation tools online for librarians or your fellow educators or for pretty much anyone in your field or other fields. I have a friend of mine who is in the business field and I give her recommendations for presentation tools all the time. So these are the types of tools that you could use wherever and anywhere that you are. The idea behind these tools are for an alternate for Keynote or for PowerPoint. They are online tools, some of which you can present while you are online with internet connection, some of which you can download and present offline. It completely depends and I will let you know the difference between the two as we are going through the presentation. So for the next half hour, I'm going to be sharing great presentation tools that I have been using or have been introduced to over the last year to two years. A lot of these are pretty new, fairly new, or very, very new. And some of you may have already used these in the past. That's great. I'll let you know if some of these have had updates recently as well. Let's go ahead and get started. Many of you may have met me in the past, especially those of you who have been students recently from the University of South Carolina. And some of you may know that I am the recently former chair of the American Association of School Librarians Best Websites for Teaching and Learning Committee. Some of these presentation tools that I am about to show you are from the Best Websites for Teaching and Learning website and many other tools in the categories of digital storytelling, media sharing. Media sharing is actually where many of the presentation tools come from, but areas such as digital storytelling, managing organizing, content curriculum, curriculum collaboration, all of those types of things are all here in Best Websites for Teaching and Learning. Just this past year at San Francisco, or in San Francisco at the American Library Association Annual Conference, we presented our 175th site. We are in our seventh year of presenting great websites for librarians to share with their fellow librarians as well as their peer educators and their administrators and students. And so many of the websites that I'm going to be sharing with you today have been on best websites and there are quite a few that are not it's a mix today but just wanted to share best websites with you before i started today because it is a great tool for you to visit as well for presentation tools and many many others if you have a great website that you would like to nominate i always try to tip my hat to best websites nomination form because we are always looking for great websites each year to be nominated and while i am no longer the chair i've been working with best websites for so long i'm always trying to you know send great websites their way and also brand new over the last few years we have been gathering we put this together last year but over the last few years we have tried to figure out a way to put all of the websites together in a searchable database and last year we finally got that done and now from 2015 to 2009 you can now search through our best websites for teaching and learning database you can now search by title which is pretty easy category or recognition year um, and so if you want to see all of the media sharing sites that have happened since 2015 to 2009 they're all here on our best websites database if you want to see all of the content resources ones or the managing and organizing ones or the digital storytelling ones a very popular category for us in library science they are all here and easily searchable for you in this very useful database so things to check out Anyway, enough of a nod towards best websites, but I always try to let people know that these great free tools are all available for you here at the American Association of School Librarians Best Websites page. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be telling you about 10 different presentation tools today. Some of them may stretch the definition of what you consider a presentation tool, but that is okay. And my very first one I'm going to talk to you today is actually the one that I am using, Haiku Deck. Now, if you've never used Haiku Deck, Haiku Deck is an excellent tool. You are looking at it, as I said, at this very moment in time. And Haiku Deck is a presentation tool that has a PowerPoint style look to it. You can choose your fonts, you can choose your formats, you can choose your layouts, you can choose your designs, you can choose your colors. But one of the major things that makes it different are the images because Haiku Deck has a partnership with the Getty Museum where you have a database 
of Creative Commons licensed images of over a million images that you can search through their database, put the images into your presentation, and then you can show your presentation online through haikudeck.com or you can download your presentation and present offline as either a PowerPoint or a PDF. It is up to you. And if you look at the bottom of my presentation right here, you will notice that the Creative Commons attribution, the license for the picture, is immediately loaded with the image when I download my PowerPoint. That alone makes Haiku Deck one of my very favorite presentation tools to date ever. And I have now been using it going on two years. And one of the really nice things about Haiku Deck is they are always growing and they are always changing. And Haiku Deck has now decided to create Haiku Deck Zuru, uh, which is a pro. Haiku Deck is actually free. And Haiku Deck Zuru is actually a pro or a paid for level. Um, Haiku Deck Zuru is actually where you can put in your outlines or your notes and it will actually create the presentation for you. And then they also have a Haiku Deck Pro that they have just released here at the end of July 2015, depending on when you're listening to this presentation. And it is barely out of the beta stage and Haiku Deck Pro has just been released and it is also a paid level and it is going to allow you to do more space online, more download options. I think you're going to have even more choices of layouts and I think you're just going to get more and more and more. I have not been able to fully explore the pro level yet only because at, when I'm recording this it is the first week of August and I've been invited to explore the pro because I use Haiku Deck so much I just haven't had a chance to thoroughly explore it yet. Just know that Haiku Deck Pro is available if you want to take your Haiku Deck even further. I will be real honest though the Haiku Deck free version has been magnificent and I have just thoroughly and thoroughly enjoyed it. All right TouchCast. If you are not familiar with TouchCast, TouchCast is an app and it started as an app and now it has moved to an online tool where you can create videos as well as presentations. And this is what we would consider an augmented reality video presentation tool. And this tool, you can actually create videos that have embedded information into the video. So it's augmented reality because the video is the reality. And then within that video, you actually have a layer of augmentation. So you can actually embed PowerPoint slides. You can embed Twitter feeds. You can embed Facebook follows. You can embed pretty much anything you want. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen here, if you see those blue dots, you tap on those. And as the video is running, it will actually open up slides while the video is going. You can stop if you want to explore the slides. You can embed articles that you are talking about during the presentation. You can embed Twitter feeds that will scroll while you are talking. And you can also pick different formats. So if you'd like it to look like a newsroom or a travel video or whatever the case may be, you can do anything you want. The free version of TouchCast allows you to make a five minute video. So yes, that's pretty short, good for introductions to libraries, short um, introductions for uh, book talks, um, short intros for assignments for class, whatever the case may be. But then you can also go pro if you'd like your videos to be even longer. So you have a free and a pro version when it comes to TouchCast. Google Slides. Now, I actually have two different pieces with Google Slides here. Google Slides, of course, is pretty easy. It is a slide version in Google. You can put your PowerPoint slides in there. You can create your slides within Google Slides. Google Slides is pretty much the PowerPoint slide version created by Google. You can have your presentations loaded into Google Docs, essentially, and then you can take them wherever you want. You can also download them and present them offline 
if you prefer. And then you have the option of some different layouts, some different formats, some different programs. But the thing is, is that this is through Google. So you have also the partnerships of Google Classroom. You have the partnerships of other programs through Google, such as Kzena, where you can actually embed comments on your students' work in Google Slides. You can do a lot of different things because as we know, Google is so large and has so much going on, they can offer a lot when it comes to your students' work within Google Slide, Google Docs, things along those lines. With Google Slides, you also have Pear Deck. And Pear Deck is where you can actually have your students viewing, working with, and sharing your slides amongst the entire classroom. So you can actually create the slides for the class. Your students can create slides for a presentation, and then they can be shared across the entire classroom amongst the students in your room, amongst the students in your library, and then you can engage your students with the content with um, tablets, with iPads, with laptops, in the smartphones, whatever you would like, and then you can actually use those with Google Slides. So I wanted to share both Google Slides and Pear Deck because you have two different tools here that both work with Google Slides in a presentation as well as a classroom response type engagement system format, if you will. So check those out, see if those are anything that interests you because both Google Slides and Pear Deck take you past just the presentation. Now you actually have an interaction response system almost format as well. Flip Snack. If you have not dealt with Flip Snack yet, Flip Snack is one of my favorites to do a presentation that's a little bit different. Flip Snack allows you to make flipping books. Now, not flipping books, says you're like, the, you know, just flipping it off, but you are actually making flippable books. You can actually create a PDF, a JPEG, any type of file, and let's be honest, you can make PowerPoints into JPEG files. You can make any Word doc into a JPEG or a PDF, and you can make any of those types of formats into a PDF or JPEG file, and then you can create them into flippable books. So for instance, what I have done is I have actually created PowerPoint presentations into a flippable book, and then I have presented the flippable book to my students as kind of a different way to show a presentation, especially for my online classes when I have been doing presentations for them as a different format. But for your students, think about maybe a poetry section of a library information literacy session. All the students write poetry. You type them up. They have their own designs or drawings that went with the poetry, and they could create their own flippable poetry books. They could create their own magazines. They could do all sorts of things. And so you're pretty much wide open when it comes to Flip Snack. You're only limited by your imagination, but it's a lot of fun, and I've really enjoyed Flip Snack a lot, and I have used it a great deal in my own practice. This is what one of the books looks like. You can, and this is an article of mine that I had online uh, with the qualitative report. You can choose your own covers. And then when you click here on the side, it will actually flip the pages, making a flipping sound like it were real pages, things along those lines. Lots of fun. The free version does have a page limit, but it does not have a limit as to how many books you can make. So you can have a student account if you wish, or if that does not interest you, you can have a library or teacher account and you can make multiple books. Emaze. Emaze is similar to Haiku Deck or Prezi, depending on what you are familiar with. Emaze is essentially an HTML5 non-flash presentation tool where you pick a template, you put everything together, and then you present. This is at this time, if I am not mistaken, an online only presentation tool. But the really cool thing about Emaze is all of the different templates. And that's the reason why I recommend it because it's so easy to create a presentation. You pick the template, you put the stuff in and it's ready to go. But some of the templates are just absolutely fantastic. They actually have 3D templates that look like the downtowns of cities and your presentation can be on the sides of buildings. And as you can see, this gentleman's climbing the mountain and you can put things on the side of the mountain. 
So if you've seen some of those really cool presentations done by speakers in our field with the really nifty templates in the background, some of them may have been using email. Some of them may have been using Keynote. It does kind of have that Keynote-esque style to it. But you definitely have some really cool templates with emails. And while it is not greatly different than a lot of the others that are out there, I have been impressed by the selection that is available with emails. And I wanted to show it, recommend it to you. It has been around for about four years, but it continues to grow and it stands that test of time. So that says something because I've seen many tools come and go. Project. This is a presentation tool that I've actually been using off and on for about five years. Yes, it is spelled J-E-Q-T. It's actually spelled completely undercase or lowercase. Project is a tool that is used a great deal by graphic designers because of the graphic designer format. The reason why it is such a great tool to use is because it really works well with not only the visual elements of presentation, but it also has over 20 different social media formats that you can directly link in to Project. So if you want to build in a YouTube video, you go to YouTube. It actually has a YouTube link built in. You click on YouTube, you put in the video, and it immediately puts it directly into the presentation. If you have a Twitter feed, you put in the Twitter name or the hashtag, you build it, you grab it, it immediately syncs it in. So you don't have to do any extra links. You don't have, it immediately syncs it into the presentation. And that's what makes Project so interesting because you don't really have to do anything special to build a really dynamic presentation quickly with Project. It has a very graffiti, blackboard, wall look to it. The one thing about it is it is only available for online presentations, especially because of all the social media linking processes. But I like Project. I've been using Haiku Deck more over the past couple of years, but in 2012, 2013, I was using Project pretty heavily. And then once Haiku Deck came out, I will be honest, I started using it more. I would happily go back to Project. It's just kind of like a squirrel. I get distracted by the shinier ones, or sometimes I just get excited by the ones that really do what I really want them to do. And these days I've really been going after the ones that allow me to present offline because technology as we know can sometimes not always work and the internet and presentation locations, conferences cannot always work. And so I really like the ones that let me present offline. But I like the ones that allow me to present online too. And I like to give people options. And that is what I'm doing for you today. Powtoon. Powtoon is a fun tool that allows you to create animated videos and presentations. The free version, similar to TouchCast, gives you five minutes, while Powtoon's Pro lets you create as long as you want. Powtoon lets you create, as you can see, the little guys here. You've got these little animated characters, and you can create talking videos with speaker boxes similar to cartoons animated in other words. And as they say, it is free. It is awesome. And Powtoon continues to just add and add and add. They now have a Powtoon Pro. They have a Powtoon Education. They're about to create a program called Hashtag Slides, which is going to be a slides program. They have all different types of stuff. So they have lots of different materials for you. And what you're going to do with Powtoon is create slide by slide a video that's going to create a program, um, a message, great for, again, introductions to the library, introductions to a subject, uh, book commercials, uh, videos for a particular genre of a section of a library. You got all types of stuff. You're only limited by your imagination. But they're a lot of fun to watch and they're really quite cute to be involved with. Um, and they're great for lib guides. You know, they can be a lot of fun. And Powtoon has always been a, a cute one. I would not do long Powtoons. I would not do 30 minute long Powtoons myself, but you can have a lot of fun with this particular presentation tool. Sway. If you are not familiar with Sway, Sway is by Microsoft and it is brand new, came out just this spring of 2015. I have been able to play with Sway just a little bit. 
Sway's idea is to be able to, similar to Google, similar to other versions of Microsoft, they are out there to give you the opportunity to create interactive reports, presentations, personal stories. They're trying to give you the option to create lots of different, um, I, to be real honest, I think they're trying to compete with Adobe. Um, and it's an op opportunity to create presentations in a different way. While Microsoft PowerPoint is kind of slightish, Sway has more of a flow to it. There's no slides that I have really seen when I was working with Sway. It is more everything is on one long template or one long, almost like a, a stream or a, a river of thought. It's, and I'm sure you can break it up different ways. I've played with it a few different times. I have only really experimented with Sway. It is so new. Um, and as you can see, it says preview Sway. Sway is at the download section at this point. You download it with your other Microsoft tools and you're ready to go. You can get started and you can give it a try. It is very interesting. It is a different format unlike anything I have seen with other presentation tools. You pick your layout, you put all of your information in the layout and everything is there. The closest thing that it reminds me of is Prezi. It doesn't move like Prezi in the sweeping, swaying motion of Prezi, but it gives you that large template, that large river of location where you can put your information in and then you can fill stuff in. It is very interesting and I recommend at least checking it out and seeing what other people are doing with Sway because it is, if you are interested in other ways of presenting your information, it is certainly an intriguing way to do so. Canva. Now Canva, you may not think is a presentation tool, but it can be a lot of fun. Canva is a template-based newsletter, presentation, website. You can create your design for all types of tools. Completely free, you can go pro, but you can do all different types of free template-based. They have lots of different designs. Similar to Haiku Deck, they have images, pictures, templates. They've got all sorts of things in there that you can use for your designs. Uh, some are free, some are pro. That's already kind of built in. And then you can go in and you can create great newsletters, emails, but then you can also do presentations. You can do sites. You can do all different types of things. Canva kind of has everything built in. So you can do a lot of fun stuff with Canva. Well worth checking out because not only does it do a presentation type tool, it can deliver quite a few things for you. It also has a brand new app uh, for your iPad. It does not have anything yet for your Google store or for your Android store, but the way Canva's going, it's going to continue to grow. And the last tools or the last of the tools that I'm going to talk about today are infographics. Now infographics are a way to graphically present your information, usually in a long streaming format. It's going to look like a digital poster that you can share on a website, you can download digitally as a JPEG or a PNG. And my two favorites in this area are PictoChart and Easily. Now there are many more. You can look online. These are just two that I've picked out. And so it's well worth investigating ones that you like the best. Chart Ninja is another that is out there, and there are many, many others I could list. But PictoChart and Easily are two of the ones that I chose because they're so user-friendly, intuitive, easy to use, easy to load things in, easy to work with. And so it's easy to make graphics, easy to make your infographics, and easy to create these digital posters for both you as well as your students. Now, one of the things that I have always talked about with infographics is making sure that students always give credit, whether it's a presentation or an infographic, of where the information came from. Because it's so easy to put our data, our information, our pictures up there and not give credit. But making sure that students are clear with their information, making sure that students know where their information came from, and making sure to give credit, especially on these infographics. Because plenty of us have seen infographics out there with no credit whatsoever as to where the information came from. So making sure that credit where credit is due is very important. And I always kind of give that small piece of information there uh, when I talk about infographics. So that is the end of great presentation tools. These are just a few. There are many more. You do a search for great presentation tools and you will get so many different hits. 
But these are some tried and true ones that come up again and again. These are also ones that about 95% I have either experimented with or use weekly, monthly, have used over the past years, have used a great deal. Please let me know if you have any questions. This is only one of the professional development workshops that I'm doing for the University of South Carolina's School of Library and Information Science. I'm also going to have one on digital storytelling tools, and I'm also going to have one on great apps. My information is here on this slide. You will see my email. That is my Twitter feed, and Tech15 is my new brand, and that is my website. That is also my YouTube channel. So I will have more professional development workshops coming soon. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and have a great day.